In this next segment, we're going to be looking at how to create a table of contents so that we can easily click through with hyperlinks to the various pages instead of having just to scroll back and forth. Um, one of the things that we want to do is set up bookmarks, which are logical names for the pages. You can do it without bookmarks, but it's good because you have a name and you don't have to always just memorize the number later on when you want to reorganize your pages. So for each one of our pages, we'll give it a bookmark and with the logical name. Make sure you've got your black arrow selected before you start this and be on page three, which is our first page of content. Over to the side, I've already got mine open, but I'll close it and show you. There's a bookmarks palette and that should be part of your interactive for PDF default um, setting setup over to the side. So for our first one, we'll just create a new bookmark, name it something logical. It does not have to be no caps, no gaps. So the first one will be Paul Browning. You can use your arrow keys down here or your pages here to navigate through. So we're on our next page and I'll call that one Rick D's. And we'll go through one more. And this one will be Ken Farmer. You can pause the video at this stage if you like and add bookmarks for the rest of your pages, or you can wait until this segment is finished and do it all at the end. So we will need a bookmark for every one of our pages eventually. If you go to page two, which is a blank page, it has no master applied to it, this is what we're going to use for our table of contents. So if, first of all, we'll just put a title up at the top, we need a text and I'm just going to make sure that I'm on my text layer. Um, and we will call this Bad Designs Are Us Business Card Directory. And we can use the character style that we previously set up might need to do a little bit of sizing or perhaps just move directory down to the next line. Oh, didn't mean to click there. So we have that set up. Then we need another text box. Put that below and this is going to become our table of contents. Because um, we're bad designers, I'm not even going to worry about that alignment at the moment. So let's type in our first three uh, pages that we want to link to. Paul Browning, Logo Works, Rick, these. Telecommunications, Ken Farmer, software developer. I'm going to select our first one and create a style, and that way um, we can have a hyperlink style that we can apply consistently while we are creating our hyperlinks. Again, because we're using bad design, I'm going to pick a font which is really difficult to read, Apple Chancery. All the year seven eights love that one. Bump up the font size, select a color. I'm going to select this bright blue, which doesn't have good contrast. And with that highlighted, I'm going to add a new character style. I'll double click that to get into it and I'll call this one hyperlink. If I go into the basic character formats, I can add other things if I want to. So because this is a hyperlink, I'm going to turn underline on. You can do other things in here, anything that you like, but I'll just put on Apple Chancery 24 points 
and the color and underline. So we have that style set up. The next thing to do is go to your hyperlinks um, tool or palette and we down at the bottom you can create a new hyperlink. Now if yours isn't showing up, if it's grayed out, you may not have your text still highlighted. And then we will link to by default I think it comes up with a URL which is a which is a web page. We could go to another file or um, another another um, email address or an anchor, anything, but we're just going to go to another page. And this is on page three. And then also we're going to select our style hyperlink and that will be then consistent. There'll be an invisible rectangle, meaning we don't want it to have the whole rectangle around it. And click OK. Now if you'll notice, it's coming up with our bookmark. We know we're um, going to the right page. And if I reorganized my pages, it would automatically put that to page four, which is really nice. So we'll go through that process again. I'll highlight my next one, Rick D's Telecommunications, create a new hyperlink to page. And this one is going to be page four. The style comes up automatically and I can hover over that and see that it's going to the correct one because I've named my bookmark. And the we'll do one more here. Ken Farmer, software developer, automatically puts that style in, which is good. And that's going to page five. And I can see that uh, those are to the correct location. Just to note, you don't have to do this, but I'll show you. If I took page four with my pages and reorganized it, I'm just moving these around here. Um, so I've just moved those. It automatically updates to say Ken Farmer is now page three instead of page five, or Rick Dees is page five etc. So that's a nice thing that if you move your pages around you don't lose your hyperlinks and you don't have to do them over again. I'm just going to put them back how they were to start and we'll hit a save. The other thing here there really isn't much letting, difficult to read, difficult text um, to read and also not enough contrast. So we've got all the bad design fundamentals going on. If I export this to test it, I need to fix page seven. I'll do that after I stop the video. So our first page, which will be our title page, is blank. When I click, now I have our hyperlink directory. So I should be able to go to Paul Browning of Logo Works, scroll through. Notice we're still missing a back, which we need to actually just have a return page. We'll do that next. Rick Dees, does that work? Yes. I have to go back twice now in Ken Farmer, and that works. So we've created a table of contents. I'll pause the video for now and you should create a table of contents with all of the pages linked. And then the next thing we'll do is add a return to directory button on our master page.